Hello there friends, CS News Live here. In today's video, Stew 2 case ban, a roster changes in vitality, mixed teams in CS, and a ton of other exciting news from the world of CS2. So as always, without further ado, let's get straight to it. And I think we shall kick off today's episode with JL, who recently shared a rather unpopular opinion about CSGO and also other older Counter-Strike games. Navi's player stated that games like CS Source and CS 1.6 don't give him any sense of nostalgia and he wasn't even that keen on playing CS GO. On the other hand, he says CS 2 has been a breath of fresh air. And you know what my friends, it's really surprising because considering JL's age and where he's coming from, I mean many people like CS 1.6 and it's their childhood's favorite. A lot of players grew up with 1.6 or CS Source. And meanwhile, with the release of CS2, however, there has been an influx of bugs and changes that nobody asked for. JL's opinion might also seem controversial to many pro players, as some have seen their stats tank with the transition to the new engine, and some are struggling to adapt to all the changes. Just recently, by the way, CSGO celebrated its 12th anniversary, while CS2 is set to mark its first birthday on September 1st. Guys, do you agree with JL? I mean, for me personally, 1.6 and Source were huge games, I've spent a lot of hours in both of them, so I personally kinda don't get it, but don't forget to share your thoughts and favorite games in the comments below. Speaking of JL, he recently shared his dream team lineup, which includes Robs, Kerrigan, Zaivu, Twists and obviously himself. And you know what, honestly, that roster looks pretty scary. Robs, Twists and Kerrigan already have great synergy and communication and Zaivu is amazing at adapting. I mean, does he even need to adapt? He is one of the best players in CS2 right now. But yeah, in this case, it's really interesting to see how Kerrigan could bring out the best in the French star. Zaivu's playstyle really is similar to Brokey's. But on the other hand, it feels like Zaivu might handle tough situations even better Better, and he could stay calm, cool and collected better. What do you think guys? Maybe JL is hinting at something? Like a transfer? New Navi lineup? Or maybe FaZe Clan? Who knows, but obviously not before the Shanghai Major. And since we mentioned Zaivu, we can't skip what Thorin had to say about him. After Vitality's win at IM Cologne and Zaivu's 20th MVP title, the analyst claimed that this was only Frenchman's second real MVP on the tier 1 scene. According to Thorin, MVPs are just awards handed out by HLTV, a fan-made website where the best player isn't choosing by some god, but by an ordinary noob. I remind you that back in 2019, Thorin even said that Elish deserved the MVP title after Liquid won IM Cologne, despite the official award going to Zaivu. But I will just say this, Zaivu had earned MVPs in the finals of Blast, IM Rio, IM Winter, as well as Blast Major, Gamers 8 and ESL Pro. Pro League Season 16 and Season 19. And those were just the Tier 1 tournaments. There have been plenty of others where he snacked MVPs as well. On top of that, let's not forget that he ranked first on HLTV three times in his career and took the second spot twice. It seems like Thorin just forgot to take his medicine again, or he's just looking to cash in on the latest buzz. And speaking of tournaments and blast, there's a high chance that they will have to reschedule their $1 million tournament thanks to Valve. You see, the problem here is that the Group A of RMR qualifier for the Major kicks off on the same date as Blast, and since it's Blast Finals and they're LAN based, all players are required to be present at the arena, which has already been booked, so this whole situation is kinda messy. And so far, Blast hasn't commented on the situation, likely because they're busy trying to sort it out. But here's the catch, if Blast doesn't reschedule, many players will probably just choose to skip the event, as qualifying for the Major is a bigger priority, obviously. And guys, to stay updated on the situation and everything else CS2 related, don't forget to follow our channel. Meanwhile, staying on the topic of tournament organizers, let's talk about ESL. Recently, rumors have been circulating that ESL is planning 
threatening to allow the use of SnapTap in their tournaments, which left many in shock since Valve banned this feature, and Blast quickly supported that decision. But according to rumors, ESL was supposedly considering allowing it. However, one of the ESL staff members recently addressed the situation, stating that no decision has yet been made and the rumors are just fake. And this raises a question, what exactly is ESL even thinking about? If they allow SnapTap, they'd be going against Valve's rules, and players still wouldn't be able to use it, since the game is owned by Valve. While on the other hand, if they follow in Blast footsteps and ban this feature, it would align with Valve's stance, basically saying we're against jump throws. But honestly, it seems pointless to even discuss this feature, because it's likely to remain disabled during the game anyway. And now let's dive into one of the most juiciest topics. Recently, KRL, the insider from France, leaked what's been happening within Vitality, and honestly, it sounds like pure chaos. According to KRL, changes were being considered right before IEM Cologne. Spinks believed the team wouldn't achieve anything, and he was exploring other potential teams to join. And all this was supported by a conflict between him and Mezzi. In an attempt to keep the Israeli player, Vitality were considering replacing Mezzi, but struggled to find a suitable substitute. During Cologne, they reportedly held talks with Hunter, but it seems that those negotiations didn't lead anywhere. KRL also mentioned that Spinks made some harsh remarks about the club's staff. Another insider also confirmed that Vitality was looking for a replacement for Mezzi, even considering players from the CIS region. What's even more interesting is that Vitality's owner was there right during this stream where KRL just leaked all this, and he denied everything the insider was saying, only then to be told that the information came from within the club itself. This basically suggests that there's a traitor in Vitality's ranks, or probably Vitality's owner is just keeping his secrets, you know? Anyways, it's really hard to believe all this, especially after their win at IEM Cologne. Could that really have been the last dance for this version of Vitality? And whoa, Hunter in Vitality? I mean, what? What a time to be alive. And it feels like we know who could help Vitality's management to track down their mole. And it's Elon Musk. If you didn't know, he used a clever cipher to uncover a leak within the company, but it's not the main point here. Do you remember how we discussed the Neuralink chips in one of the previous videos? So basically now there's a second person playing CES using one Neuralink chip. So this guy Alex, one of the test subjects with a chip, can finally dive back into his favorite hobby, playing FPS games entirely through thought control. It took him about 5 minutes to start moving the pointer, but by the next day he was already designing in 3D. According to Alex, it's an incredible experience to just run and control his in-game character purely with his mind, without the need for specialized controllers for people with disabilities. And honestly guys, this really sounds like a revolutionary breakthrough. Imagine what people could achieve with such technology. Technology. On the other hand, it's kinda scary, isn't it? Now let's get back to Vitality. It's worth mentioning that Valve recently updated their rankings, and the team now holds the top spot with 1964 points. Right behind them are Navi with 1941 points, closely followed by G2 with 1938. The top 5 is rounded by Mouse and Team Spirit. Vitality also lead the HLTV rankings, with Navi and G2 as well behind them. And here the biggest climbers are Saw jumping 9 spots to take the 10th position. On the other hand, the biggest drops came from Spirit and Aurora, both losing 3 spots. Spirit are now 5th and Aurora are 25th. Since we're talking about HLTV, we can't ignore the latest update on the website. They released a huge update to the players' profiles. Now they show detailed stats like firepower, how often they enter sites first, their success in opening duels, clutches, grenade usage, trading efficiency, and performance with sniper rifles. If you switch to advanced stats, you'll see all of this along with more detailed info for each side. This update makes it easier for analysts to make predictions, and HLTV users can dive deeper into learning about their favorite
favorite players. And speaking about stats, here's an interesting fact. 8,643 teams registered for the RMR Open Qualifier in China, setting the all-time record. Previously, people were amazed when over 3,000 teams signed up for the first CS2 Major Qualifier. But this is on a whole new level. For context, the maximum number of teams is capped at 99.99, and the Chinese community is close to reaching that limit. This surge in interest is likely tied to the fact that the Major will be held in China, but regardless, that's an enormous number. Just to put it into perspective, we calculated that this involves like over 43,000 players competing. And that's amazing. Before we dive into the match analysis, let's talk about how Stewie2K got banned on Twitch. The reason is still unclear, but it's likely a glitch or mistake because the player was just unbanned 6 hours later and continued to stream as usual. Stewie didn't comment on the situation, possibly because he didn't understand what happened and why it happened or simply didn't even notice it. The good news is that everything is back to normal and he can keep on streaming. Now let's jump into the first matches at Blast Showdown. The opening game was between FaZe and Rare Atom and it was obviously expected to be an easy win for FaZe, especially since their opponents chose one of FaZe's best maps, Inferno. And this match started with total domination from FaZe, as they effortlessly took the first four rounds. However, a mistake allowed Rare Atom to bounce back with a streak of four of their own. Both teams then traded two rounds each, leading to a tight score at the end of the first half. After switching sides, the Chinese team secured both the pistol round and the follow-up, but then failed to win another one, leading to a map loss as they moved on to FaZe's pick, Ancient. The second map also started well for FaZe, as they won the pistol and the follow-up, but Rare Adam responded with a three-round streak and even took a slight lead. However, Rops stepped up with a crucial 1v3, though Rare Atom answered back with two more rounds. Near the end of the the first half, FaZe put themselves together and secured four in a row, gaining a slight advantage. In the second half, FaZe extended their lead by taking the first two rounds, but then the game became a back-and-forth affair. Ultimately, FaZe closed out the game and secured a well-deserved first win. But honestly, I have to say that Rare Atom did good. The next showdown was Heroic vs OG, starting on Anubis, OG's pick. And it was clear that OG came prepared as they secured 10 on the CT side, which is generally considered the weaker on this map. However, after switching sides, OG seemed to struggle. Heroic started to come back. It was epic. But, well, in the end, OG's lead was simply too large, and they managed to hold on to take the first map. Next was Nuke, Heroic's pick. Surprisingly, Heroic's T side looked underprepared, as they got only 4 rounds, and even those were like hard earned. Although it's mathematically possible to mount a comeback from a deficit like that on Nuke, it's not an easy task. Heroic, though, kicked off the second half strong, winning first 2 rounds, but then they lost a streak of 3 to OG. The teams then just traded rounds back and forth, and Heroic were one step from closing the gap. However, OG managed to secure the final round, and it was 2-0, congratulations to OG. And the last match of the day was NIP against Amkal, and people from all over the CS2 community were unironically calling it the worst match of the season. Just take a look at the scores of the first two maps. On Inferno, Amkal's pick, they completely demolished NIP with 13-3, and the only notable moment was an ace by Crad. Next was Ancient, which ended the exact same score, 13-3, but this time in favor of ninjas in pajamas. And finally we had Vertigo, and honestly, it's hard to explain how the score ended up so close. Just watching NIP's aim, you'd wonder how they struggled so much, though to be fair, the Amcal players also gave the casters a good laugh. It's honestly hard to believe that this is happening in a qualifier for a tier 1 event, where teams like FaZe are already competing. But in the end, 
and Cal took the win in this bizarre match. Now let's keep it fresh a little. There came an interesting idea from Anna, a player from Imperial's women's roster. In case you don't know who she is, he won a lot of titles with Nigma Galaxy in the past years and also won HLTV's top one. So she just mentioned that in the future she would love to see mixed teams at the tier 2 or tier 3 level, where both men and women can compete together. According to Anna, they are doing everything they can to make this a reality. On one hand, it's admirable that they're pushing to evolve women's esports in this direction. However, the road ahead is challenging due to the persistent stereotypes surrounding women in competitive gaming, making it honestly unlikely that we'll see this change anytime soon. And to wrap things up, let's take a look at the current standings in the closed RMR qualifiers. In Group A, Sengal and Sinners have already secured their spots at the Major, while Ants, TSM, Enterprise and OneWin are on the brink of elimination. Meanwhile, teams like Gamer Legion and Bleed still have a decent chance of advancing. In Group B, Cloud9 and So have locked their spots at the Armor, while Zero Tenacity, Amcal, Incilio and Johnny Speeds are hanging by a thread. The teams with the best odds of moving forward are B.I.G. and OG, while the rest will have to fight hard to keep their armor dreams alive. And that's all for today, my friends. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. And also leave a comment, as it helps us develop a lot. I'm not saying goodbye for a long time, my friends. See you soon.